Hey, hey, this is the wild around us. I'm Jeremy, your personal naturalist. And this? And I'm Eric. And we are coming to you from the Squam Lakes Natural Science Center, where we advance understanding of ecology by exploring nature. We've been exploring, this will be our third episode yep. on the fisher. And if you haven't checked out the first two, please do so. You can locate those episodes either on our podcast format at The Wild Around Us, search that on whatever podcast site you check out podcasts, or go to the Squam Lakes Natural Science Center's YouTube page. Either way, it's great. If you want to see us, see some videos that go along with each of these episodes, check out YouTube for sure. The tenacity and ferociousness of the fisher is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I love being able to check out some of these videos that we capture out on our cameras here on our property and kind of explore some of that, Eric. Yeah, I think the first thing that people need to realize uh, for the fisher, really, or should I say the final thing, is that the fisher is a hunter. Um, you know, although they look cute, and cuddly, kind of like an elongated teddy bear, um, this is a well-adapted predator. And this animal uses multiple senses and adaptations to catch its prey. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cover a few of these with you today. Let's start with its sense of smell. Their sense of smell is so good that they can even smell prey underneath the snow. I find that really amazing. So do I. We, knew, we learned before that their sense of smell is also great for being able to mark their territory and know who's living where. Its hearing is uh, really good too, but its eyesight allows it to detect movement of other animals where it lives. And they also have some really interesting adaptations to their skeletal structure. Mm -hmm. So their shoulder blade is arranged in a way that allows a fisher to climb by pulling its body up a tree with its front legs. This is going to be useful for them climbing up to a natal den or um, if they're following prey up a tree. And its elongated body allows it to be able to go, whether it's up in that tree and into a hollow or a hollow log on the ground, or even a brush pile in and out, or a den that might be located on the ground too. Add on to that, that there's a swivel joint that's located in the ankle of the animal here. And this is gonna allow the animal to uh, rotate its back leg 180 degrees. So when it is coming down a tree, it can come down head first. So here's this versatile animal um, that hunts on the ground and up into the trees. It has a great sense of smell. It has good hearing. Plus, it's got a body that's shaped to fit into really tight places. But the question is, what is the fish are hunting? Well, as a generalized predator, they tend to eat mostly small mammals to, to medium-sized mammals. Things like mice and voles, shrews, chipmunks, squirrels, snowshoe hare, and maybe even up to the size of a porcupine. Mm. Occasionally, they'll eat other things like songbirds and grouse, uh, amphibians, reptiles, uh, muskrat, so things that live in the water, even beaver kits on occasion. and Things like raccoons. Fisher will also feed on carrion. And if it's more than an animal can eat, they mm. may cache their food for later uh, using snow or leaves or debris to actually cover their food. And although they're classified as carnivores, fishers are really good opportunists. Mm. And that means they can take advantage of plants as a food source. That would include things like berries apples, and beech nuts. What's really interesting about the way a fisher hunts is that they use different strategies depending on their prey and depending on where they're hunting the prey that they are hunting. 
Fisher don't lie in wait and ambush something they want to eat. They don't chase down their prey over long distances. But instead, they really like to investigate all the likely places that their prey would, would be. Yeah, and when foraging in an area where there's a high concentration of prey, mm. uh, the fisher is going to change its direction frequently. Um, they may crisscross their previous path, um, and this will increase the chance of flushing out and capturing an animal. Um, they use this method actually quite a bit when they're hunting snowshoe hare. Yeah, they're going to climb over uh, uh, brush piles, fallen mm -hmm. logs, uh, around and over tree stumps. And they even can tear into the dead parts of a tree that are starting to decay, whether it's up in the tree looking for squirrels or a fallen log or a rotting smaller standing tree looking for mice and voles uh, in and around those areas. Hold on a minute. So we've got to think about this. We've got this animal that's traveling a great distance around mm -hmm. its territory mm -hmm. and it's hunting by crisscrossing the area look, looking for prey. And then it's investigating all these locations for sources of food. Yep. They've got to be using a lot of energy. Well, it's, it's estimated that a fisher needs about one and a half pounds or so of food a day. And if you consider an adult male fisher weighs about 12 pounds, a female weighs about six pounds, that's roughly like 13 to 25% of their body weight every day. Wow, that is a lot. Yeah. So let, let's think here for a second. So if I have somebody who's 150 pounds and I want to figure out that percentage of their body weight, that would be, mm. hold on a second, Math. Uh, 20 to 37 pounds of food a day. Oh, that's a lot. You're eating a lot of pizza for that. Yep. <laughs> However, even though a fisher is a really good predator, mm -hmm. they do have competition. You know, bobcat, lynx, marten, weasels, wolverines, coyote, fox all eat the same or similar things. Huh. And in particular, a gray fox and sometimes a red fox, they'll follow a fisher around hoping to find those food caches that you were talking about. Oh, cool. Yeah. And um, they'll eat that small prey that was cached by the fisher, fisher. And some of these animals are even predators to the fisher, too, like, uh, like the wolf or lynx, even a coyote and bobcat might go after a fisher, especially that, that smaller female. And occasionally, even a great horned owl might take a fisher. So even if a fisher can avoid predation, it's still difficult to compete with these other animals to find enough food to survive. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy life. And as a result, fisher rarely live beyond four years old in the wild. A, a short life, yes, but still an amazing animal. And if you ever are out exploring and you find evidence of a fisher in that area, remember, it's a testament to the rich biodiversity that can be found there. Yeah, it really is a neat animal. We hope that you've enjoyed these three episodes of Visiting with the Fisher. And wherever you go, whatever you do, don't forget to do the important thing. Get out and explore the wild around you. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.